Welcome to Pioneer Disc Golf. I'm Mark and I'm at a new course today. I'm at Blue Goose and I'm joined by the owner. It's a private course and he's gonna tell you all a little bit about this course. So Stefan, when did you guys first build this? In, uh, I think in 2000, uh, we got a basket for Christmas and uh, yeah, it was sitting there for three months until COVID hit. Okay. And uh, after COVID, we didn't have anything else yeah. to do. And we, you know, set like, it play up disc golf. and play, play <laughs> disc golf, yeah. played horse and pig and whatever and we liked it so much and then we have a property, 50 acres and we just thought, okay, we buy some baskets, yeah. some play and, perfect. and then start it. That's perfect. There. About how long did it take you guys to build this? I would say two years. Okay. Two years. The first uh, summer course was about a year and then six months right after we built the um, the winter course we call it winter course because we thought we just played in the winter time sure yeah. sure okay all right well thank you so much this is a private course so if you want to play here make sure that you text or call stefan he's got his number he's got it linked in udisc and i'll have all that stuff linked down in the description below but other than that i'm going to take you guys through the summer course is that the better one or the, the more scenic one the more scenic one the, okay. the winter course is okay very good and also why is this called the blue goose that's actually a funny story. We uh, uh, went pheasant hunting in North Dakota, uh, three buddies of mine, mm -hmm. and uh, we took the RV, and I have never pheasant hunted. Uh, so uh, we took the RV, and I got my hunting gear, mm -hmm. and it was the forecast was 50, 55 degrees. Okay. But on the day we left, suddenly the forecast changed to 17 and 32 oh. high. So the only thing that I found in was my blue, light blue snowboard jacket. Okay. And so while we were hunting in North Dakota, and our friend said, look at, look at that blue goose. <laughs> so we were hunting with all these hunting ex experienced hunter sure. and they made fun of me because I wear that <laughs> snowboard jacket. I'm the blue goose. So that, that's how this course got the name blue goose. Yeah. Okay, got you. So yeah, Stefan is originally from Germany. You've been here in the U.S. for like 23 years, 22 years? That's correct, years, about that. 23 years, yeah. And you bought this property about 20, 20 years, years ago? 20 years ago, yeah. Okay. Well, you did a great job. I'm so excited to see this. Great idea turning this into a disc golf course. That's exactly what I would love to do with property one day if I ever got some. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I You're appreciate welcome. it. All right, hole one, 375 feet, downhill, par three, pretty much wide open. Got a little tree line off to the right in case you turn a disc over too much that could come into play. But other than that, it looks like fairway driver or something pretty far downhill. Just get you the two. First throw of the day, in case I shank it. All flatten out. All right, so guys, this is basically exactly like what you would dream about having if you're a disc golfer you probably dream about a place like this right in your backyard 50 acres and then two separate 18 hole courses i i can't believe this i honestly don't think i've ever been more excited to play a course than i am for this one not a great drive ended up hydrating out a little too early i'll try to lay this up get pretty close On the hole two, 238 feet, par three. Thrown into the woods a little bit. First half the fairway is open, then about 150 feet down there, get into some trees. You could kind of get a little bit lucky. Looks like there's a little hyzer line. Maybe a mid-range or a fairway driver or something you can get out on a hyzer, try to get close. I'm gonna try my FD, try to sneak it in there. So like Stefan was saying, he hadn't even really heard about disc golf until like 2019, 2020, right around COVID. And he said he's typically a soccer player, but he couldn't play in a soccer league. So he needed something to stay active. And that's kind of what a lot of people did. Kind of how disc golf took its big boom forward, just right around that time period, you can't play uh, any contact sports. So disc golf grew in popularity. And he already had a huge property to work with. So the light bulb clicked. I should build my own course.
All right, pretty good drive. I'm in the circle. Probably about 20-ish feet. Oh, it's utterly close. All right, kind of slow par par start, but on hole three, 238 feet uphill, basically wide open though. You throw a nice hyzer uphill, decent power, you should have a good look at the putt. I had a good look at the putt on the last hole, but I just left it low. I'm gonna try to pump my FD up there. Skip. Ah, oh, it's so short. Probably got about 60 feet to go. Give it a run here. Oh. All right, still even on the hole four, 294 feet. Big bombing hyzer though, again uphill. One thing to know about Blue Goose, very hilly. No flat holes yet. So it depends only about 300 feet out there, but it probably plays more like 350. Well, let's go escape, big hyzer. Yeah, I had it a little bit inside and there are some of those tree branches that stick down. I think it was a good line though. I like how the basket is kind of mounted up in that tree stump. I love it when courses do stuff like that. It's an elevated basket, but we're using the natural surrounding. Oh, that's too high. Come on back. Ah, close. All right, another par coming up. Assuming I make this. All right, on to hole five, 282 feet, big pine trees to the right. You kind of go down and then you go back up to a plateau. It looks like you go a little bit back down after that. You need to throw something nice and straight, about 300 feet out there. That should be able to get you up and down for the two. I'm gonna throw my vandal. Just gotta keep it as straight as possible. Good flip. Get through those trees. Oh, I got knocked down. Not bad. I came up a little bit short. I caught by those trees. But I want to look. That's it. What are you, are you guys playing the back? Yeah, or the other? Gotcha. Can't do that. You gotta play him. I know, I know. It's a nice course, dude. Thank you. It's tough. I, what I like about it is how it's like not an easy birdie, like by any stretch. Like I've gotten all part. I just bogeyed that in this putt. Oh, but although, like, uh, although they're very short. Yeah. They're always hitting somewhere. Uh huh. And, uh, they're they're gettable. Like I'm coming up short on my drives, like by like 50 feet each time. Yeah. So like I can maybe make that, but. The next one is gonna be really, really tough. Six? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we call it self-pity for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it, What is it, a par four, par no, three? Par three. Love it, It's Love one, it. one of the toughest on the summer course. And okay. I, I think I got two or three birdies. Okay in two years, okay. so it's very tough. I'd love to get one. I can't believe I just missed that putt. Yeah, I got yeah, nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, I was playing I, I clean. Think, I think you need a camera on me. All right, I got nervous on that putt. Everyone's watching, so I took a bogey. Score sitting at plus one, but on the hole six, 325 feet uphill, par three, but man, it is a crush. That absolutely plays 400 feet or more. Got to get to the left of that barn. You'll see your basket sitting there. Doubt I'm gonna get a birdie on this hole. Don't escape. I'm trying to get it close to that barn. There we go. Okay, that should be an open look. So the basket's actually sitting on like one of those old carts. 
That is so cool. All right, probably still about 90 feet away. Still got to get a little bit uphill, but there's that tree line behind. So I want to get nice and close. All right, this looks like a scoring opportunity here. 279 feet, pretty much wide open though. Just a tree off to the right. Hole seven, par three. I'm sitting at plus one, not very good. This course is challenging, but I love it. And we're kind of throwing up on an elevated area right here. This hole is called the stump. Oh, sweet. It's a little barn off to the right. Man, I am so happy to be here. I love this place. Let's go Vandal right at it. It's gonna turn a little bit. Hopefully it turns past that tree. Turn, hold that turn. Yeah, here we go. Oh, a little long. All right, kind of messed up. Looks like going long. So just the way that they've got the basket elevated. I've got a bunch of tree limbs in my way. I'm still gonna run it though. I need a birdie here. I think if I mess up, it is what it is. I might bogey, but I wanna run this and try to get Get back to even. Man, there's a lot of stuff right in the way. Come on. Let's put it in those chains. Oh, it's low. Ah. Devon said that one of his sons, I think, holds the course record here, which, not surprising, probably plays here all the time. But he said that was minus eight. I'm about to tap in a par that's going to put me to keep me at plus one through seven. So I don't think I'm beating the course record today. But that's okay. All right. On to hole eight. This is finally our first par four. It's called the Tombstone. We're throwing over top of a cemetery, a small cemetery. That's interesting. <laughs> it looks like a big dog leg. Got to throw pretty far out there, and then you got to start working your way down off to the left downhill a little bit. 457 feet, par four. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do here. All right, I'm gonna try my escape. It's on a little hyzer. Try to get out in the middle of the fairway. Oh, that was good. <laughs> Almost hit that uh, headstone. All right, pretty good drive. Would have been better if I worked a little bit further left. That's okay. This will work just fine. Got about 120 feet to go. Nice little narrow gap, but it looks like if you end up a little long, got those logs to kind of help you out a little bit, maybe catch your dish. Oh yeah, come on, sit, sit. Okay. All right, should be able to make that. All right. Good birdie, I like that hole. Good design. Back to even. All right, hole nine is tough. Just walked the fairway, 212 feet, par three. But yeah, a lot of woods, a lot of trees. Off to the right, it's a little bit of, of a pond. If you hit a tree early, you knock down right, you go into it. You just need to throw something out nice and smooth and straight. Looks like there's also a forehand gap. pretty good all right pretty good drive but by no means am I in for birdie with the way the basket's situated right there yeah I got a tree coming right in front of me got a tiny little window to hyzer this in let's go oh that feels good that's really good that's two back to back all right it warmed up a little bit. Look, you all, Michael Myers is back here. That's kind of creepy. Actually, very creepy. 
I bet this place is pretty eerie. They could have a nice like haunted like attraction, like trail of terror type thing back here. Man, I'm so jealous. This dude is living the life. He knows it though. All right, onto the back nine though. Starting off on hole 10, 209 feet, basically straight ahead. Two rows of trees though. You can kind of go the slightly early left gap or the more so wide hyzer gap. Let's go MD3 for the hyzer play. Get lucky. Get super lucky. No. Oh. Almost got lucky. It's a tough green area. Drive got knocked out a little early. A little layup. All right, hole 11, 189 feet, par three. Straight ahead, a little bit off to the right at the end. Pretty fairly tight gap. I think an origin, forehand. Tight origin. Turn, turn. Oh, oh, oh. Got kicked long, that was cool. All right, on hole 12, 207 feet, big valley you're throwing over. Once you get up to that big tree though, then it starts to go pretty quickly uphill. So you throw something out there nice and straight, little hyzer, gotta get up the hill though, but don't wanna throw too high and hit those early branches. 268 feet, par three, uphill. You just throw something pretty far. Go FD, nice hyzer. Try to skip up there a little bit. Okay. Oh, anti-skip. Man, I feel like that was a total right line. All right. This is makeable. <sighs> On a 13, another par. All right, hole 13 is very unique. Nice tight gap yet again. But once you get to that big kind of odd shaped tree down at the bottom of the valley, you gotta work yourself back to the left and uphill. And then your basket's gonna be kind of protected off a little bit to the right. Definite hyzer gap off the tee, but you don't wanna push too far forward. And also you don't wanna end up too early left. You need a nice wide open approach for the green. 283 feet, so definitely gettable, but gonna require a really nice tee shot. All right, FD again. Right play, throwing it basically right at that tree. Got a hyzer in front of it. Oh, oh, I got so lucky. Oh. <laughs> I missed the gap wide, but that's actually still not even a bad landing zone. Really enjoying this course. They're not totally done with it on the back. Um, all the tee pads aren't quite in yet, so I've been just kind of running up on the uh, dirt, or you know, sometimes there's rocks. But they've done a really good job with the signage showing you not only where your next hole is but also they've got like unique names for all their holes really an awesome job tactic that kind of flexes back to the right it's there it's available come on oh yeah i didn't get that hyzer and finish around this fat tree that's what I was hoping to get. So over here, it's crazy. There's actually a little bit of a line straight through here. I think I'm in the circle though, so no step. But I'm gonna try to take this inside line to the basket. It's wide open, kind of. Oh, okay. That's close. You gotta really earn your birdie on this hole. T shot needs to be executed well. I was just close on both, 
and left with an outside putt, and that's how it goes. All right, hole 14, 158 feet, throwing uphill again, fairly tight gap, but after you get about 60, 70 feet down the fairway, it does open up quite a bit. The basket is placed very precariously up in between that tree. So even if you're in the circle, you might not have a look for the putt. Not positive, but I think it might be a little bit better to end a little long. That way you have a slightly open comeback putt. Go Casey Pro Rock up the hill, try to get close. Okay, I have no clue, but I mean, definitely hit the gap well. We'll see if the putt's open or not. Really like throwing that Casey Pro Rock. I think it sometimes ends up being my more so of a straight disc than the Origin. The Origin is very flippy. Um, if you throw it at slow enough speeds, it'll stay straight. But that rock, Casey Pro Rock, I can throw it a little bit faster and it'll still stay straight. It's not gonna turn much on you. And it's also not gonna really dive hard left at the end. It's a nice disc. Okay, this is great. Very close. But even still, yeah, I don't have like a gimme putt. That is crazy. Oh man. I need that extra foot. That is crazy. Let's go. That's a rewarding too. Birdies out here, they just feel so much different than getting a birdie at like a normal course. They just feel much more earned. All right, sitting a nice little two under with a missed tap in putt. I think I'll take that. I think that's a relatively good score out here. But there's still plenty of holes to go. Now we're on a hole 15, 325 feet, par four. Got to get through the gap early, wide open field, and your basket's going to be pretty far down there off to the left. Definitely another gettable hole. Then need a good drive down. I don't necessarily want too hard of a finish to the left, I don't think. So I'm going to take my vandal, just try to throw it straight out there towards that cemetery almost, and then work a little bit back to the left. Can't tell if that got far enough. We'll see when we get up there. Hard to tell. All right, I just want to kind of get this close. I don't think I need to do too any, anything too crazy. So I definitely secure that birdie. Oh, caught that tree early. That's okay. All right, on to hole 16. This one is extremely unique. I've never seen a hole like this in my life. Uh, Udis has it at 284 feet, and it's called the Barndo, like your Mando, but your Barndo. You gotta throw into the opening on the barn, and then there's your basket. You'll see it with the drone flying through. Uh, it's tough. I think you want to get a little bit off to the right, but you don't want to push too far right. And ending early left is definitely screaming bogey. So I'm gonna take my Vandal out, try to get through the gap, and try to nestle in kind of softly up on that right side. Have an open look for at least the park. Oh, turn. Hold that turn. Push. No, oh, it's gonna be short. Oh, no. Oh, short by like That's five right feet. Oh. I'll, I'll try one more for fun. I might have to take you up on that drop zone. Dang, that felt right. I'll try the escape, give it a little bit more power. way early you could park it if you throw I've, it just seen, the, I've seen people park it you could definitely do it yeah. that was close you can eat it <sighs> I keep putting it short that's good nope, nope. same mistake <laughs> Man, that's a fun hole though. Makes you want to just keep throwing at it. Yeah. <laughs> this is why my rounds end up taking so long. Is that it? Nope. Oh, that was close. <laughs> that is so fun. <laughs> what a fun hole. So I'll play that first one. I'll show you all the throws that I had. A couple were really close. Vandal was the first one I took. 
ended pretty early. I don't know. You said there's a drop zone? Okay, Spawn says there's a drop zone. I might take it. All right, guys, so here's a drop zone. Back it up a little bit more. So I'm gonna go to the drop zone. My first drive, it just ended up too far left. I really can't really get back and save par. So this is for par. Oh, I don't know. Might just try to rip a forehand in there right at it. Maybe bounce off a wall or something cool. Ah, too low. Oh well. All right, on the hole 17. Downhill, it's right outside the barn. It's 326 feet, par three. It's actually the same basket that was for hole five. It shares the basket, but you're just coming at the hole from a way different angle. You're coming from uphill, down, you need a hyzer in left late. Back to a minus two after the bogey. Uh, I'd love to stay under par. I have to really blow up to finish over par. Uh, let's go skate. Damn it, I love this course. Look at the view. Look at the view from the seat pad. Are you kidding me? Not even fair. I think I found my new favorite course in Kentucky. There's other, you know, nice courses and all that stuff, but the fact that where this is located with the property being private, you just really can't beat it. All right, ended up a little bit deep. Probably pitched off for the three. too much power oh yeah kind of in a jail cell over here the green. it's like the same putt I missed earlier need this one for par All right, final hole, hole 18, 469 feet, all the way up the hill by the house. I hate that this round's over. I want to keep playing. All right, gonna take the escape. Try to work it up. I can get about 300 feet up there, have a nice approach. Try to get on a birdie. Vaughn and his wife looks like they're making a fire. Hopefully my approach, assuming I get up the hill, still got a ways to go. Hopefully I don't land in the fire. Be kind of funny. Still got a ways to go uphill. I'm honestly gonna take my tack and kind of throw it out towards that fire. Just try to hive her in. Hopefully take this three. Minus three. Three down. Yeah. Not bad. That's not too bad. Not bad. That's, uh, I would take that any day. Yeah. Any day I would take it. Took it took two bogeys too. So like, you just clean those up. Which which one was the bo bogey? Bondo and? Bondo and then the one you were like standing by me, I missed that putt. <laughs> it was a 10 footer. Okay. But it's a bogey. I mean, uh, you gotta make those. I've missed those in tournaments before. Yeah. It's like, even from here, like you put it low, yeah. you bogey. You're sloppy. You gotta put it in. That's this, y'all. Man, great property, great round. That was so fun. So Yesterday we, ended my round, and I was having such a good time talking to Stefan. We ended up having a couple beers by the fire with his wife. His kids came out. I think I stayed almost two hours after I was done playing. And I totally forgot to film an outro and I didn't get any of the drone shots either. But I'm actually kind of glad that I was able to do it this way because it gave me some time 
to reflect on the experience that I had yesterday. Playing at Blue Goose was not just a regular round of disc golf. From the moment I pulled up to the property, saw the house, pulled up behind the greenhouse, and then stepped out onto hole one and looked at the valley, I realized that this was an experience more than just a disc golf. I played at a lot of courses over the six years that I've been playing, and I can truly say that I've never been to a property like this. This is Stefan and Kristen's home. This is where they've been for the past 20 years. They've done everything to this land. Whenever they first got here, it didn't look like this. Even a couple years ago before the course was built, it didn't look like that. They did all that work themselves with, of course, a little bit of help from some of their friends. And after playing this course, talking to Stefan, learning more about him and his family, I feel like I have a true deep connection to this place, which is pretty crazy considering 24 hours ago, I didn't even know this existed. But that is why I love the disc golf community, and that's why I spend so much time and effort dedicated to this channel. Disc golf might just be a game, but to me, it's way more than that. And I'm truly so thankful for people like Stefan who are welcoming to people like me. Let me come in, film their property, and then not only that, but also spend time with their family. If you are ever near Frankfort, Kentucky, make the effort to come out here and play the course. Contact Stefan first. I've got all the information to get in touch with him linked down in the description below. Come out here, play the course, donate some money to help with the course maintenance efforts. And trust me when I say this, whenever you're done playing this course, you will immediately want to come back and play it again. If you haven't already, be sure to like this video and also make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn the notification bell on. That way you're alerted every time I upload a new video. Also be sure to watch one of the two videos right here floating on my head because I want to go ahead and wrap this video up. Thank you so much for watching all the way until the end. It really does mean a lot to me. I hope that you have a fantastic day. With all that being said, I'll see you in the next video.